Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today we're going to be covering a new type of custom crops. Uh, this one will be on the based on it will update based on the time of day rather than a just random tick. Uh, this basically still has the randomization of you know crops updating randomly. It actually has make seven attempts before it will automatically update. So roughly about two days, give or take, uh, that it, it can not update. Now, as you can see here, we've I've basically just used the uh, time set command to update the crops a little bit faster. Um, if we go and set our time to <clears throat> time set, and then if we set it to uh, 23999 then you can see that some of the crops have changed uh, the mainly these ones have been updated a little bit and there's a few other changes to them so if we update it again as you can see there's a little bit more of the white berries on some of them and there's a little bit more white berries across so another thing is I've created seeds so basically if we right click on any other block that is not farmland we cannot place the seeds if we harvest that we get obviously a little bit of a crop uh, we got light blue dye and we can plant um, on the farmland now I'll cover how that basically works this hasn't changed but some people seem to be confused with why crops and seeds and stuff can't be placed on um, farmland and there is a very specific reason for that. I've covered it in previous tutorials but I don't think everyone's seen that particular tutorial so we'll cover that in just a second. So yeah that's basically how it works. Uh, you can basically harvest these, get some crops from it and some other stuff but uh, outside of that let's go into Creator and I'll show you the long list of code so let's get started. You're going to need a few different resources to start with. Now the first one that you're going to need is your item texture for your seeds and then you're going to need your eight different textures for your crop stages. Very similar to wheat, uh, this will be possible to do based on the on lower levels or dynamic levels of crops but I'm going with an eight as that's more hard to actually do. Uh, the only thing that you need to do is make sure that you have your last stage as your last dyna or last stage for your crops and stuff like that. I'll explain how that works later on. So those are the resources you need. I You'll also need um, to use uh, the built-in crop model um, block base for the blocks, but we'll get into that. So back to the seeds, uh, you need to set your item texture and then give your seeds a name, set the rarity for basically displaying the color that you want it. Uh, you might want to put this under miscellaneous for seeds. Seeds are usually found there and you want them to stack up to 64. Other than that, uh, it doesn't have an inventory or and the only trigger that we have is when right clicked on block hand location. So let's cover that procedure really quickly. And as you can see here, we have a few different types of procedures going on. These are all um, direction based. So we're actually testing for the face of the block that we're right clicking on. That's what's going on here. And that's why there's multiple versions of these procedures that are basically running. What this will do is it'll better add the seeds compared to just placing it on the top block but I'll cover how this works in just a second. Let's start from the stop from the top of it. We have the first one which is this one right here. We're basically running it on the server side so it's only going to run basically on the actual game side of things so it won't basically run twice when the player right clicks on the block because when something is run on client and server then it will basically have basically have a chance of running twice and we don't really want that so I basically just ran it on server side by creating a 
if statement and then a not and then going to world data scrolling down and then is provided on remote side like that and then that's basically going to run it on the server side so after which uh, we have this procedure right here which basically tests if the item in the main hand of the provided entity is the provided item stack so provide item stack is basically the item are seeds because we know it's our seeds uh, then we're basically testing if the seeds are in our main hand so to do that uh, all we need to do is go to create an if statement right place it down here and then what we're going to do is go to logic grab a red operator like that and then what we're going to do is go to entity data scroll a little bit down find when item in main hand we're going to place that right here and then what we need to do is we need to go to item manage or pardon me minecraft components and then we're whoop, minecraft components and then we're going to scroll down where it says provided item stack and we're just going to place that right there like so so after we have whoop, uh, that all set up, what we're going to do is actually swing the main hand of the provided entity. So we wanna go to entity management and then we're gonna scroll down a little bit where I think towards the bottom and then it says swing main hand of provided entity. Now that we have that all set up, uh, what we need to do is test for the direction of the blocks so I'll cover that in just a second. I'll only cover the upside direction because that will basically be all you need to basically figure that out. You can download the procedure afterwards. So what we're gonna actually end up doing is we're going to test for the direction face or trigger slash face, and then we're going to test for the block that we're right clicking on. So what we're doing is we're going to use a if statement and then we're gonna place this down right here. And then you would want to click on the gear icon and then add six of these, or pardon me, five of these. So it's basically like so. And when you have that all set up, then you wanna use the same settings as all of these other ones right here. So exactly set it up that way. After, uh, to basically get these parts right here, what you need to do is go and grab a and statement, drop it down like that, set this to external output, and then what you need to do is you need to grab a operator for direction, which is the orange one, and then we're going to need a Minecraft component and then we're going to actually grab two things from here. The first one is the direction. So we're gonna set this to up and then we're gonna go back to Minecraft components and get trigger direction slash face. And then we're gonna place that right like that. And what this will do is it will test for the face that we're right clicking on. After which uh, we want to basically right click our test for the block that we're right clicking on and um, what we're gonna do here is we're going to grab a yellow operator for our blocks and then we're gonna get the block in our current location. So we're gonna scroll down and then we're gonna place that right here. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna grab, go under Minecraft components and grab a block. And then we're gonna set this block to our farmland which should be somewhere in this list, so right here underneath the wheat. And this will cover both um, the wet farmland and the dry farmland. So it will cover both of these. And then what we need to do is actually create the procedure inside of that. So let's cover how that all works. There are a few different components to that part. So what we're doing here is we're basically testing if the block above is something replaceable. Now, if it's a farmland block, it should technically only have air above it anyways, but in the case that something is generated through commands or something like that, you might wanna to check to see if there is um, a replaceable block and all these different 
types of tags or material types also have replaceable blocks. So things like air, all the air variants, fire, tall plants, structure voids, and crafted snow all are replaceable. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a if statement and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to block and then there should be one further down called material type and it's right here. We're going to basically just um, create a or statement. So we need a light blue operator and then we're going to go or and then external inputs and then we're going to basically place that right on here. And then what we need to, is the get block direction. So we're just going to place that right here. Now this direction needs to be relative to where you're going to be placing the crops. So we're right clicking on the top of the block that of the farmland. So we know that the block is going to be placing one block above. So we're going to go Y plus one for these coordinates. And if we go to math, grab a number. So it's like that. And then what we need to do is basically duplicate that one, two, three, four, four times. So one, two, three, and this will be our fourth one. So it's like this. And then we're gonna set the material to air. So scroll down until you see air, air somewhere around here. So air, and then there is fire that we need it should be a little bit further up and tall plants uh, tall plants is somewhere in tall plants and then we have uh, structure voids so structure void should be towards the bottom I think uh, structure voids and the last one is crafted snow so that should be midway, so crafted snow, so it's like that. And then you basically have a system that looks like that. And what you need to do from there is basically test if the player is not in creative. So we're gonna grab a if statement and we're gonna place it inside this particular if statement. And we're gonna go logic is not and then what we're going to do is test for the entity's game mode. So we need to go to player and then we're going to grab this block right here and then we're going to set this to creative. So is player not in creative? And then what we want to do is we want to run this script right here. So we're going to set the main hand of the provided entity. So we're going to actually go to entity. Entity, entity management, I think. And then we're gonna scroll down until we get set item in main hand. And then we're going to remove the number. Actually, we'll keep the number, we'll just move it out. And then we're gonna remove the red block, so it's like that. After which, we need to go back to Minecraft components and grab a provided item stack. And we're going to also grab a math operator under the math. Uh, tab and then what we're going to do is we're going to subtract one and then we need to get the amount of items in the inventory of the main hand so what we're going to do is actually go to item procedures scroll down until you get to the bottom where it says get number of items in provided item stack and then we're just going to remove the items in pro or the provided item stack and then what we're going to do is go to entity data and we're going to scroll down and get items for main hand and then we're going to basically place that rate um, like like so so we're going to drop that into that place right here for the creative tab and then the only other thing that we need to basically do is place the block so what we're going to do is we're going to go to block procedures replace block and you do not need to keep the state or keep the inventory. So we're just gonna disable both of those. And then what we're going to do is replace Y with the same Y as we're basically getting the, um, the material type from above. So Y plus one for that. 
Also, you want to set this to your first stage for your block. So when you have that, when you have your first stage set up, you can actually do that. If not, then just set it to cave error or something for the time being. So I'll also provide the procedures uh, for every coordinate based, all the different coordinates and stuff are a little bit different based on where the block is being right clicked. So it's probably easier if you just download the procedure itself. Um, but that's basically how the seeds work. And we will go into the um, blocks next. So we'll start with stage one. So th stage one basically has a few different things going on here. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to set the block model to uh, our built-in model for crop model. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the rotation of the model and we're going to leave that to default. Other things that we need to enable is transparency and we're going to set this to translucent and we want to enable it has transparent parts. Over here you want to select your texture for your model and this will basically replace the crop model with the texture for your actual crop. Now this is where the important part comes in for fixing the actual farmland when the block is placed on it might turn to dirt. Now what happens when that's basically going on is because most blocks have the value of 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1 for the, the uh, bounding box. What, what's basically going on here is it's a solid block and how farmland works is if it, a solid block is placed on top of the farmland itself, it's going to turn to dirt. So what you need to do is actually set your minimum Y coordinate to 0 0.001. And what this will do is it will just raise the block up just a fraction of a pixel and what it'll basically prevent the farmland from turning to dirt while still allowing your crops to be placed on it. This will work for any block that you want to basically place on farmland. After which uh, we'll go to the properties and you want to set up your GUI name. You want to set your material type to plants, block sound to plant, and have no creative inventory. Uh, you also want to set your hardness and resistance to zero after which you want to be able to walk through the block and you want the block to be replaceable because I think crops are replaceable if I remember correctly and you want it to drop the seeds and also for the creative pick item you want to basically get the seeds as well so when they right click on the block in creative mode you want to basically select the seeds rather than the crop model itself and moving on to advanced properties, you want to set the tick rate to one, and then you want to set your color on map to whatever version that you want uh, based on the color of the actual texture of your crop, I guess. And uh, other, pretty much everything else here, you can basically leave the same. You do need to enable tile entity, and you want to set the inventory size to zero and disable these two blocks right here. Energy and fluid, fluid storage, uh, this is basically disabled, we don't need it. And there are two different procedures running here. There's actually both block breaking ones are just the same procedure, it's just basically used for both of these. And then we have the update tick one, which is our second procedure. So I'll cover the breaking one first and it's not too complex. Uh, all you need to do is basically run it on server side and then spawn gem for the uh, the crop itself. So to spawn the gem all you need to do is go to world management and there's a block right here that says spawn gem and then you want to offset the coordinates for the the drop to 0. 5, and that will do it to the center of the block so all on your X Y and Z and then just select your seeds there and that's all you need to do 
So after which, uh, let's go into the update tick. Now this is basically run for every every one of the um, different stages has this except for stage seven. So what we're gonna basically do is cover all this. So let's minimize how all this works. So first thing that we're doing, we're running it on server side, that's important. And then what we're doing is we're going to test if the block underneath, so negative one, is not farmland. And if that's true, then we want to remove the block with a drop at the coordinates of 0. Point, or 0. 0.5. And if it does have farmland underneath it, what we want to do is set a local variable to a random number. So we're going to need to create a local variable set the variable name, make sure it's a number, and then create a local variable. I have it set to random chance for this particular procedure. And then what we're doing is we're basically setting that local variable, so local variable, and then we're going to basically set this to random, and that's basically what's happening right up here. After which, we're going to test for a few different conditions. Now, I, I have explained the time thing, what basically is going on with this part right here in a past tutorial. I will uh, link to that video down below and then you guys can basically see how this basically all set is set up. But basically what this does in short terms is it's basically testing for a specific time of day uh, based on ticks so in our case we're getting the world time we know that it's 24 hour clock and then we're basically testing if that within that 24 hour clock it is set to one tick and then there's 6,000 ticks 12,000 ticks and 18,000 ticks for all the different times of the day so those are all the times that it will basically run this procedure at if we expand one of them, uh, what we're doing here is we're testing if the random chance is equal to or greater than five. And then we're also testing, or we're basically creating an or statement, and then we're going to test if the mod idea attempts made. So we're basically adding attempts if this condition is false, and if it's equals seven, so roughly two days that if it hasn't grown, then it's gonna be forced grown uh, to the next stage. So what we're doing here is we're just replacing it with the next stage of the block. So this is stage two, uh, we're on currently stage zero. And what this will do if this condition fails is it's just going to basically increase this number uh, by one. So it's going to go up to seven and when it's on seven then what it's going to do is it's going to just replace the block automatically. So that's basically all that's going on here and there's a few that's basically all the different versions of it. It's the exact same thing. Uh, how to create that? All you need to do is we'll start with the time thing first. So what you need to do is create a if statement, grab a logic operator, like so, a dark blue one. And then what you need is a math operator, and you're gonna place that in your first slot like so. You're gonna actually click on the plus icon and set this to mod, and then you're gonna need a number. So your number should be 24,000. And then what you want to do is go to world data, and there should be a block get current world time and you're going to place that in the other part for the mod after which you want to test for your time in ticks so in our case we've set the first time of the day so basically time is zero and we're testing for the first tick of the day and then I've basically done that for 6,000, 12,000, and 18,000 for those particular times. So you basically just can duplicate this and update these numbers here. So 6,000, 12,000, and 18,000. 
and that's basically how that's all set up. After which, uh, what you want to do is basically create this part right here, which is an if statement and an else statement, so like that. We want to test for two things. We're going to create a light blue operator, go to or, and then we're going to external outputs. And then we want to test for our random number. So we're going to actually grab a dark blue operator, test if it's equal to or greater than, so the one with the line underneath. And then we want to test if that is equal to or greater than 0 0.5. You can set this number to any number you want, but it has to be between 1 and 0. So the other thing that we need to do is go to custom variables, grab our random chance, and then we're going to set that up like that. The other thing that we need to do is we need to go to our logic again, grab a dark blue operator, and then we're going to need a number. So math components, set this to the amount of attempts made basically for before it forces the block to update. And then what we're gonna do is go to block procedures, grab a local or MBT number tag, and then we're going to set this to our name for this one here. So you can set it to attempts made or your mod ID attempts made, whatever you want for that. So basically that's what's going on here. And then what we're doing is we're just basically replacing the block if this is true and we will set this to our next stage so our next stage is one in our case and then what we're doing after that is we're basically just setting the MBT variable if it's false we're moving down the number getting a math operator we're increasing this number by one and then we need to also get the MBT number so the name of these tags need to all be the same for all three of them. Outside of that, that's basically all that's going on with each individual section here. All right, so now that we have that part all settled, uh, we can carry on into the rest of the procedure. So there is when grass is broken. Now this is basically to when the seed, basically when we break a block, we want to get seeds from grass. And this is another commonly requested thing that I get from people. So I thought I would basically cover that in this tutorial as well. So what we're doing here is we're running it on server side. And then what we're doing is we're testing if the player is not in creative mode. And then what we're doing is we're going to test for the blocks that we're basically destroying. And if it's any one of the grass variants, so regular tall grass, the fern double tall grass, or a double fern, then what we're going to do is we're going to set a random chance, which is the local variable. And it's also a number one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to test if random chance is equal to or greater than 0 0.75. You can set this to any number that you want. And then what you want to do is basically just spawn the seeds at that particular location. So 0 0.5 to offset the block or offset the drop to the center of the block. And that's basically all there is to it. Uh, this will basically drop seeds when you break grass or um, other, all our other stages. So stage one are completely the same It's just duplicated. And we've basically set the uh, when block destroyed and the update tick procedures so that they are unique for each individual block. That seems to be a fix for um, the other tutorials that I've done before I used to test for what version of the crop you, it used to be, but um, that seems to be a problem unless you're running it from when block is basically broken or a global trigger. So it has to be done through the, um, for each individual block like so. So each individual stage except for stage seven. Uh, stage seven only has the breaking procedure. And for this one, what we're doing is we're just going to make sure that we drop our crop f 
fruit, and then we're going to have a random chance of dropping the seeds. Now I'll always drop one seed, this will just drop two seeds, and this will drop three seeds. So that's basically how that's all set up. All right, so that's the gist of the tutorial. Sorry, it's a little bit longer, but I will make sure to add chapters so you guys can easily follow it in the description. And if uh, you want to download it, the download link to the GitHub project is in the description as well. So definitely check that out. If you want the procedures, the textures, or the actual workspace, and you can grab all of those from that particular download. So without further ado, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.